Bharat Mandapam in New Delhi, where G20 Leaders Summit is going to happen in little more than a week from now. The most important aspect of G20 is commerce and economy, where the world's 70% of GDP will congregate here for a discussion and the way forward for the world order. G20 is also important because of the strategic relationship between the countries and between the clusters or groups of countries. With me is Praful Bakshi, a strategic affairs expert in India and known worldwide. He is a wing commander, Praful Bakshi. He is not only specializes in defense and air force, but also on the strategic affairs. Sir, this is the most historic place the world will see in a week's time from now. What are the strategic assets or strategic strategy that the world should know and world should remember because commerce is fine, but it has, there has to be peace and tranquility before the commerce and the business could happen. Pranav, you are absolutely right. Until and unless there is peace, you cannot progress. And when you want to progress, you have to progress industrially, commercially, from angles of tourism, uh, angles of all technology, everything. But for that, you have to have a proper atmosphere where everything can be done in a, in a manner which is safe, which is secure, and you have to bother about your security overall of this region. I am not talking of single region, but G20 countries are going to be involved from here to South China Sea, from Persia Gulf, from here to Persian Gulf and beyond. Those countries now will be putting their best, their total economic effort. 70% of the GDP is uh, taking birth out in this place. The world trade passes through Malacca Strait, 80% of that. All that, keep keeping all that in mind, you have to have a strategy which will bring in overall security, jointness, so that your industrial development, commercial development, even social security is looked after and you progress peacefully. If you don't have that secure atmosphere, your progress will be very difficult. Social security is the word that I'll take a cue from. Social security, you mean uh, strategic security of the world, the status quo of the world. We know that uh, there is a conflict in Russia and Ukraine. We know South, uh, pa South China Sea and Asia Pacific is a hot, uh, is, a, is a boiling topic. We know Middle East has issues. We know the terrorism is, a, is gripping the world once again slowly uh, clawing its space in the civil society. But the strategic thing that we all want to know is where India will find traction. Our Prime Minister calls it People's Summit. Our Prime Minister calls it uh, Vasudev Kutumbakam. But Vasudev Kutumbakam and People's Summit also needs to be first secured and you are a, uh, you're who better than you who is a air force uh, wing commander who, can, who has been serving Indian Air Force and who has been so traveling all around the world who can uh, better analyze this please analyze it for us and for our viewers at large of vision television world thank you very much Pranav what you have said is absolutely correct what I was trying to tell you and what is the fact is that you have to progress jointly and joint progress means you have to come close you are not only you will only come close when your home is secure your internal problems are taken care of there is no interference of one country into another that besides you have to make sure that when you are working collectively then your collective effort is looked after collectively in the sense your industrial growth your commercial growth trade, commerce, nobody should be allow, uh, occupying your land, your islands, like it is happening in South China Sea. All that thing, what is happening in Ukraine is totally anti, uh, uh, the idea is totally anti our idea. So what I was, I'm trying to tell you that we have to now jointly make out a plan for joint industrial development, security, commerce, everything. But you have to make sure that your joint efforts towards protecting each other, protecting the overall assets takes place very, very efficiently and immediately. That's a very important point uh, that Wing Commander Praful Bakshi ji has raised. 
but also important is how India will place itself and leverage from G20. Let's talk to him and find out two important aspects, the, 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 the parallel tracks of defense track uh, of the leaders summit that has happened over the year uh, within the G20 presidency of India. But also important is how India will grow in two important aspects. One is uh, indigenization of our defense forces and at the same time uh, making India self-reliant in defense uh, production. Tell us to our viewers uh, what is the way forward. Uh, absolutely right, Pranav. The way forward is that we have to have total, what you call as indigenization program, not only in defense. Before that, total industrial indigenization. If you are making your own engines, your metallurgy of metal, your production of engines, your production of aviation platforms, your production of other engines, including locomotive, engines for ships, and radar equipment, all equipment, what I am trying to tell you, including cyber equipment, has to be done. If you are producing that, then India will become strong. If you have a strong industry, you become have a strong defense industry. If you have strong defense industry, you are on your own. It means what in Hindi you use the word swav lambi, means totally indigenized. You now don't depend on anybody. Once you have achieved that status, nobody can then put you down politically. Nobody can twist your arms from the foreign policy point of view. Nobody can force you. There was a time when you bought an aircraft, you were made forced to buy other equipment because you are totally dependent on that. But now that time has gone. We are, last seven years I've seen, we are progressing so, so tremendously that indigenization is a byword. It is a total, what a, what is a watchword for India. Look at our program of uh, uh, Brahmos. Look at our program of Tejas. Look at our program of various other aspects in telecommunication, satellite, everything. We are launching satellites for other countries. What does it mean? We are capable of it. Our capability has to increase at such a level that nobody can tell you, no, you cannot sell your LCA to Argentina because our ejection seat is on that. That is how British is twisting your arms. We should make our own ejection seat. This is a small example I'm giving you. That is why this is so important. Indigenization in industry, indigenization in defense, and that message will go to all G20 countries. Wing Commander Prafal Bakshi, and that brings to me to the and it reminds me of another question uh, that I want to draw your attention on. Our Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji is the first Prime Minister who said that indigenization and the return of technology or bringing the technology, if we buy any aircraft from any foreign country, that should be manufactured, assembled, and then manufactured in India. If we buy any drone, that should be assembled and manufactured in India. But at the same time, we also should raise our own level. Where do you see and how powerful is this Prime Minister of India who will be chairing, who will be having the center stage at the G20 summit of 2023 in New Delhi, just behind me? That's right, Pranav. You're very right. The message is loud and clear. Prime Minister has made it very clear that this aspect has to be now borne in mind. And as we come, as we tell you, this program, the, the question of indigenization is there. But more than that, we have to organize ourselves in the total organization of the G20 countries. It is not only meeting. Now they'll have to make out various plans in how to progress on industrial level, commercial level, tourism, joint tourism, cultural, cultural programs, archaeology, everything, including space, including cyber. So that plan has to come up and the leadership of Prime Minister has made it very clear. All countries are ready to listen. And as you'll see, wherever he goes, now all countries not only come and listen to him, they join him in their um, uh, various projects. This joining up and holding our hands firmly is the spirit of G20 and that will carry us forward. Wing Commander Prafal Bakshi, another issue that is what United Nations couldn't do, G20 could. We have seen, we have seen during COVID, the world knew what India could deliver. The world knew, the world saw by their own naked eye what 
the humanity, humanity and how India served that humanity by bringing the COVID vaccine to more than 200 countries or close to 200 countries. India is talking about Vasudev Kutumbukam, but is there a technology transfer from the developed world to the developing world? Is there a space for technology transfer in, in, in we saw that happen during COVID because of the world pandemic. But do we need for another world pandemic for that technology transfer for the basic need of other Africa for the Asian countries which are struggling or which are trying to come up and uh, they become a developing uh, from developing to developed country. India has uh, millions of people, uh, tens of millions of people more than that. Hundreds of millions of people have come out of poverty. Can that happen in uh, different uh, parts of the world which are uh, deprived? Because G20 is economic summit and G20 is also a strategic summit. Absolutely, it's economic summit looking in a strategic angle. But let me tell you one thing. Yesterday, I attended the Africa Unity Day and Ethiopian Embassy. You were there. We saw ourselves that what the uh, African countries have realized the entire wealth of, of uh, various countries, big countries, European countries, uh, are getting $500 billion a year from them. If you don't, if those, that country does not get it, they are a third world country. Everybody has realized. So that is why the, radical of the radicalization of religion has to go. The exploitation has to go. Until and unless you stop exploiting. And that is why, right in 1947, uh, the movement had started, Asia, Af African movement program had started. Now that program should be revived. Uh, there should be a union-like activity between Asia-Pacific countries and African countries and jointly work towards such a way that, uh, work towards progress in such a way that the exploiters, I'm telling you clearly, the European Union countries were the exploiters. Let them come to know that they can no more do such a thing that the, this region, Asia, Africa, Asia Pacific zone is going to become very progressive. It will progress on its own. And as you say, the jointness will be there. The strategic uh, the technology transfer will be there. Offset arrangements, etc. They are the tricks of the trade which will all take place. So let me assure you, the ball has already started rolling. We are way ahead. Now nobody can has to tell us what to do that we don't have to be given money for everything now you will see ah uh, we are going to become so self-sufficient that their foreign aid etc will be a thing of past it will be a history gone are the days of colonial rule gone, gone are the days of colonial empire this is what uh, wing commander praful bakshi says uh, citing the example of uh, african union uh, that's a very interesting point you also i may also like to bring to your attention that uh, our uh, Prime Minister has talked uh, time and again about uh, incorporating African Union and incorporating uh, African uh, Union into different aspects, bringing uh, African Union into all international uh, diversified uh, groups and, uh, uh, and, and associations and, uh, uh, and bring the African Union forward. Because also, and our Asian countries also, because it is Asia and Africa which is rich in mineral resource and which is needed by the world at large to become from the graduate from developing to the developed world. You have to absolutely right. <laughs> we have to bring the African brothers up. They have vast resources and minerals. You talk of gold, diamonds, uh, uh, precious stone, um, uh, ores, everything is there. But yet, they are getting the maximum aid. They are under maximum problem. Why? Because they are not united. Maximum conflicts are there in Africa. And their assets are being uh, whistled out, so, uh, been yeah. trickled out. Assets are being taken away and they are earning money. The armed suppliers, especially the European powers, these same powers are earning money by supplying them arms like they're doing to Ukraine through NATO. They are doing it. They are earning their own money and laughing all the way to the banks. This has to stop. And for that, you have to have a strong organization. Do you think, let me again interject, and do you think this is a very important point? I want your very straightforward answer because you are known for talking very straight. Blood diamond is something that the whole world got rid of, is trying or in the process of getting rid of. Do you think the armed uh, conflict 
and the arm supply should also be uh, b b bloody arm supplies should also be abolished and the and the culprit should be uh, talked whether it is a set of group of people or a or a mafia or or a country involved in it yeah absolutely right when you have a strong organization african countries asian countries and pacific zone area any conflict which is arising will be thought will be dealt with jointly in a joint meeting even if angola and say tanzania or and egypt or some country they are getting on a conflict that has to be that has to be solved by jointly by everybody so that they don't resort to arms moment they resort to arms they start the foreigners start creeping in they start making their bases like is happening in sudan like it is happening in ethiopia it's happening everywhere that these foreigners are china mostly is taking maximum advantage i am no china is an asian country i know it very well but the message is going to china also that your days are over you will also have to curb the exploiter exploiters within our zone and that also is being watched so when you have a proper g20 organizations coming up and african countries and asian countries coming up all these subordinate organizations will also come they will be controlled by one headquarter wing commander you have traveled in africa indian you have traveled with lot of uh, uh, delegates tell me straight forward why india is uh, indian peacekeepers who has been doing a stupendous job around the world bringing peace saving life of a uh, public at large are not getting the traction or the or the or the or the, or the accolade for what they do don't you think indian peacekeepers uh, need to be uh, strengthened and other countries should also join india in developing or in keeping the world order and the keeping the world peace absolutely right the peacekeepers job is a very very back breaking and a thankless job but question is it is a political move the united nation is a political body and pull and the united nations works towards where those people who are calling the shots supplying the giving the money they solve their political problem why in uh, uh, angola you saw so much in rwanda you had 10 billion people butchered machete to death why did it happen why did un un did not intervene why un is not intervening in in uh, ukraine why you uh, united nations failed in yugoslavia why because it does not have fangs it has no unity it is a joint program it is like a union i personally i dare say we will have to organize ourselves in a far better way than even united nations that is the dream which we have to complete for strategic security you have to have a secure border and the refugee at large whether it is from myanmar or from bangladesh or from uh, from uh, north africa or from west africa going to europe or or from uh, uh, latin america coming to uh, north america do you think refugees and uh, and and the human refugee human part of the refugee and the bad elements in refugee need to be segregated and that is could be a important place uh, like g20 even though that is not uh, may not be very much into their agenda but this is important for the strategic and for the economic prosperity of the world to grow as a unit absolutely this will be a talking point it may be discussed on sidelines but how to uh, control the radical elements how to control their growth how to control their ideas what is happening in myanmar exactly they are depending on that how the money manipur problem is there this is all the religious leaders who created a problem in that that is my opinion it did rohingya has everything yes every everything to reckon with a, to to create a destabilizing effect in india even china is taking advantage in arunachal they are infusing religion in the arulian arunachal regions they themselves don't believe in religion and god but they are taking advantage but because they know which weapon to use so we have to be now uh, when the doctrine is written of the g20 the policies are written this will be this will find a very important place this will be discussed threadbare and everybody will discuss it and then proper policies sops will be written and the questions which you are asking will be solved so what is your final assessment what will be the red letter day on december on september 10th when the g20 summit concludes and the and the press statement or the other statements or the message comes out from this very 
प्लेस फ्रॉम भारत मंडपम बिहाइंड अस इन न्यू दिल्ली यस द भारत मंडपम विल गिव द मैसेज लाउड एंड क्लियर दैट द प्रोग्रेस व्हिच वी आर डूइंग फॉर दैट देयर इज नो लिमिट नॉट ओनली ऑन स्काई नॉट इवन स्पेस इट्स बी गोइंग टू बी बियॉन्ड स्पेस वेयर वी आर गोइंग टू प्रोग्रेस टुगेदर वेयर इट विल बी वेरी नाउ वी विल बी क्रॉसिंग प्लैनेट्स वी विल बी गोइंग इनटू गैलेक्सीज टुगेदर वी हैव टू थिंक लाइक दैट एज अ बॉडी and as a body of humanity and not as a single country our prime minister uh, one last question to you again our prime minister has such a wide such a such a forthright vision and he says g20 is people summit what is your opinion about it how that will amalgamate india we have seen the the how the whole country is uh, finding it uh, having different aspects of different tracks of g20 summit spread all across india and this will be the biggest g20 summit that one could ever dream of one could ever think of and one uh, the whole world leaders will be uh, 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 appreciating and anticipating it absolutely right pranab g20 is a people's movement why prime minister modi ha has been elevated to this place by the people of india it is the people of the world which look up to prime minister modi the largest democracy, the largest democracy of the world they look up to this and that is why it is the strength of the people strength of the thought of the people which has given which has brought us to this mandapam today if that is be so rest assured it is on your marks get set go we are already on the on your marks get set go is going to be announced now that uh, bharat mandapam that is where the whole world will come together for the economic prosperity for the joint statements for the uh, deliberations to, to lead india with camera person nehal singh pranap prakha reporting from bharat mandapam behind me in new delhi